Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. We welcome you to Faith School, the place where our spirit gets fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers, which is what God intended for us to be, not to be overwhelmed, overcome, defeated, but to overcome and to live a victorious life. The life that God has planned for us, many people are not living the life He planned for them, but the life He planned for us is not without challenges, but it is the overcoming life. Uh, walking with the Lord, walking by faith doesn't mean you'll never have any issues or you'll never have any challenges, but it does mean if you hold on to Him and won't quit, you overcome every one of them. You overcome everyone. He always causes us to triumph. Do you like the sound of that? Yes. Well, let's uh, pray and release faith. And you get your Bible and come right on in here with us at the seat we've saved for you again. And, and uh, believe to hear from Him and get answers for right now. Father, we all agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing, asking you for utterance. You've been so gracious and faithful to give us these things. And you, you feed us just like manna from heaven. You, you feed our spirit exactly what it needs every time. And it builds us up and it enables us to rise up, grow up and, and, and rise up higher and lay hold of all that you have so freely and graciously, wonderfully given us. We ask for it. We believe we receive it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Open in the textbook again today to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and let's continue uh, talking about the series we're calling By Faith, By Faith. The scripture says in Hebrews 10, 38, says, now the just shall live, how? By faith. By faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Now, a great revelation there is that faith is not passive. Faith is, faith appropriates. The uh, great failure of God's first covenant people that he delivered out of Egyptian bondage is that they would not aggressively possess the land he gave them. They saw the giants, they saw the walled cities, and they went back to their tents and they cried and they felt sorry for themselves. This is the picture of drawing back, sitting back, laying back, saying, We can't. Now, some may think, you know, that that caused God to feel sorry for you and say, Poor thing, look at them laying there in the tent crying. The giants are too big, they don't know what to do. Poor dears. No. The Bible said it irritated him. It angered him because he has done everything that needs to be done. He picked out the best spot on the planet for them and he gave it to them. And he's there with them to enable them to take it. And they won't do it. They won't take it. They drew back. They sat back. Finally, the next generation, after that whole generation died out, the next generation under Joshua took it. They marched around the walls of Jericho till they fell down. They, they uh, took and possessed the land, proving the previous generation could have done it. Amen. They did it. Could have done. Could have been done. Instead of wandering around out in the wilderness for 40 years, they could have been working in their own uh, fig orchard, in their own <laughs> vineyards, in their own houses, and living a, a blessed life. That is a graphic picture of what's happening today in cre Christianity. Uh, still, the Lord has not changed. I mean, our covenant has changed. Our approach, our access to Him has changed. It's not through works. It's by grace and faith through Jesus. But God hadn't changed. He's the same. His, how He sees things, and His will, what pleases Him, 
doesn't change. How he functions hasn't changed. Faith works just the same in Revelation as it did in Genesis and everywhere in between. It, it hasn't changed. And so uh, say it out loud, I walk by faith. I live by faith. I am not of those who draw back, who pull back, who lay down, who give up. I am of those who believe and step up and reach out and lay hold and overcome. Hallelujah. That it, it pleases God that you've got some get up and go about you. Right? Yes. Now remember, he knows what you're capable of. If you're sitting there crying, feeling sorry for yourself, and you've got, you got this ability and grace and strength in you that you're not even trying to use, God knows that. And he's not okay. He's not going to pet you. Going, poor thing. Aren't you know so sad that you're so pitiful and so, so helpless? No, because he knows. All you got to do is get a hold of yourself and get up out of there and come on and do this thing. Right? Now, it will look like you can't. And there will be times it will feel like you can't. And there will be times when everybody around you will tell you, you can't. And the circumstances and everything will tell you, but that's where faith comes in. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. We're not looking at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the spirit of faith is the spirit of the overcomer. We, you know, the Bible said, uh, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The spirit of faith is the spirit of victory, the spirit of the overcomer. Are you getting the spirit of this? Yes, yes. The Bible talks about 2 Corinthians, what is it, 4, 13. We have the same spirit of faith. Just like the patriarchs that we're reading about in here. We've got that same spirit of faith. Said they believed, therefore they spoke. We also believe, and therefore we speak. You can hear the spirit of faith. It's, it's not only just the exact words that somebody's saying. It's the spirit of the conqueror. The spirit of the victorious one in them. And what pleases God so much is that if you're in some kind of fight in life, we'll depict it like in the boxing ring, and you're, you're entangled in the ropes, and, and, and your whole body's touching the mat except for your head just a little bit, and your nose is bloody, and uh, blood's on your head and in your hands, and, uh, and you look up and go, I'm winning. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> I'm winning this thing. <laughs> that pleases God. It will cause him to move over whatever, through whatever, to zap you, quicken you. Next thing you know, you will be standing there going, he won. You'll go, wow, I did. Yeah, you won. <laughs> God intervened. But it's when you're down on the mat, when you're hurting and you feel like giving up, that's when we really find out. If you have faith or if you don't, faith is a choice. Which way are you going to go? Remember, when it's looking so dark, when it's, you're feeling so pressed, look up and say, I'm winning. I'm an overcomer, right? I'm more than a conqueror. According to the word, I've already won. Jesus got it for me. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, I'm a winner. I win every time. I'm a winner. I'm winning right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, that was worth you coming to faith school for right there. Let's keep reading uh, chapter 11, the great heroes of faith, hall of fame of faith. Tells us what faith is in verse 1. Tells us what happened uh, with the elders and begins to mention individuals in verse 4, by faith Abel. Then verse 5, by faith Enoch. 
Then in verse 7, by faith Noah. And you'll, you'll see that uh, virtually every one of these, there's some kind of action word after that. By faith, Abel offered. Can you see that? And uh, by faith, Noah, we know, what did he do? He uh, prepared the ark. And James talks about this, that faith without action is dead. Well, dead faith gets no results. And so it's not enough to just talk about how much you believe. If you really believe, you act on what you say you believe. It's like, you know, a little kid standing on the high dive and daddy down in the pool or mama and going, hey, jump, jump. And they go, oh, I believe in you, daddy. I believe in you. So jump. Uh, not right now, but I, I believe, I believe in you. No, if they really believe, they'll jump, right? Well, that's us. In every part of life, uh, faith is not just talk and talk only, but it is corresponding action. You act on what you say you believe. There's a verb. There's an action word. Virtually every one of these. By faith, verse 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Faith obeys. And he went out, not knowing where he went. So faith will obey even when it doesn't know, doesn't understand why it doesn't see the full picture. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now, not too long back in our faith school sessions, we looked at detail about Abraham and his faith. And you won't find a better example of faith than Abraham. He's called a father of faith, and we are, his we are his children by faith in Jesus. And we're to walk in the same steps of faith that Abraham did. And so if you, haven't, if you weren't with us for that, go back uh, on the website or uh, wherever you have access and get these previous ones on Abraham because you really need that to understand fully what we're getting into now. But verse 11 is where we are in our study. It says, through faith also Sarah herself. <laughs> Sarah has her own verse. <laughs> in Hebrews 11, it's not a shared verse. With Abraham, the language is very pointed specific here. Read it again. Through faith also. You see the word also. That's not just Abraham. He had faith, but Sarah also. Then it wants to make sure you understand, also Sarah herself. <laughs> Every word's significant. Every word's important. Sarah also. Now we, we like talking about Abraham, but you need to talk about Sarah also. And uh, Abraham had faith. We know he did. But Sarah had her own faith, not just a faith that was a part of Abraham's faith. She had her own faith. And when it comes to spiritual things in our relationship with God, we don't know God through other people. Uh, the Bible said husbands and wives uh, are one what God has joined together, let no man separate. One flesh. That's not the same as one spirit. That's not the same. And even though husbands and wives can be close and learn a lot about each other, your relationship with God is not through them. It is direct between you and them. And you're the husband, the wife's spiritual development is not identical. And uh, so the Lord, what the Lord reveals to one 
is not automatically revealed to the other. Oftentimes he does reveal the same thing to both, but it's not through the other person. Abraham's relationship with God and his faith was direct between he and Abraham and God. Sarah's relationship with God, her faith in him was direct between her and him. Sarah also herself had faith. Hallelujah. Had faith. Um, <laughs> y'all with me on this? It said, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Faith is a receiver. And this is one of the biggest things faith is. Say it out loud. Faith is a receiver. Strength is one of the things we need to receive on a regular basis. Have you ever felt a little bit weak? <laughs> a little bit run down? A little bit tired? Maybe not just in your body, but in your mind. Huh? A little bit tired in your, in your soul. A little bit tired just <laughs> in general. You need a quickening. <laughs> Hallelujah. We know the quickener. And the Spirit of God in us is the quickening spirit. But it doesn't just happen, this quickening doesn't just happen automatically. It must be received. The word receive, in the, in, if you look in Hebrew and in Greek, especially in Greek, you'll see uh, when it talks about believe, whatever it is you desire, like in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you'll have it. That very same word is translated take. Same Greek word exactly, translated take in the same King James Bible, numerous places in the New Testament. It's a good study if you want to do it sometime. You're, you're doing no injustice. You're not stretching anything to say when you pray, believe you take it and you'll have it. And this is one of the great truths about everything that God does for us. Everything God does for us is grace. Grace. Grace, you could say, means gift. It means free gift, which indicates no, you didn't earn it, you didn't merit it, you don't deserve it. It's a free gift. But the significant thing here is that no matter how much has been given to you or me, We'll enjoy none of it except what we receive, Amen. right? right. I mean, in the world, somebody could offer you a million dollars, but the only way you're going to enjoy that is what? Receiving. If you received it. What if you wouldn't receive it? <laughs> what if somebody's trying to give you $10 million and they call you and say somebody's wanting to wire this money to you and you say, I'm sorry, I, I can't receive it. Huh? And they, are, are they serious? Yeah. Yeah, they're waiting on you. Well, I'm waiting on them. No, they're waiting on you to receive it. Well, I, if they want to give it to me, they already said they want to give it to you. They've already given it to you. Yeah, but I'm not enjoying it. I know. Receive it. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't have it. I know. <laughs> if you'll receive it, then you'll have it. Now, I know that sounds strange, but this is exactly what's going on in Christendom amongst the church. People are going, well, I don't have it. Right, receive it. Yeah, but I don't have it. I know, receive it. Believe you receive it. Believe you take it. And how do you take something you can't see or feel? Faith is the hand that takes. I'm not trying to take something from God. It's against His will. Taking what He has offered what he has given, what Jesus has bought and paid for. Somebody say, I'm a receiver. I'm a, receiver. I'm a receiver. You're a believer and you are a receiver. And this miracle that we're about to get into that happened in Sarah's life, it required a total transformation of her body. So we're really talking about healing here. And beyond healing, we're talking about turning back the clock. 
significantly turning back the clock. Does that sound good to anybody? Yes. Hmm? This, is, this is not a bizarre, strange thought. Anybody remember the psalmist? He said, uh, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul. Uh, Psalm 103, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And among other things, he renews your youth and strength like the eagles. Somebody say, youth renewed. renewed. Does that sound good to anybody? He's done it before. Would he do it again? Yeah. Now he, you know, he may not just wind you if, if you're 80 years old. He may not wind you all the way back to 16. But <laughs> besides that, how long do you want to stay down here anyway? Right? I mean, you know, heaven's a nice place. When you get through, you should be able to leave. But uh, there are times, for whatever reasons, that we've been aged, or situations, I should say, people have been aged prematurely. They really have aged more and quicker than they should have. Sometimes people weren't living for God for years. They were abusing their body and doing different things. And and sometimes even Christian people that love the Lord, they haven't learned how to live by faith. And so they worry incessantly and just, you know, grieve and sorrow and worry. That will break you down and make you old before your time and wear you out. But not to despair, God can restore. Do you believe God can restore? God can restore things that have been damaged for whatever reason, whether it was abuse, whether it was disobedience, like we said, unbelief and worry and anxiety. Even if your your immune system has been weakened, even if your glands and your organs have been you know, sometimes you'll hear people say that the doctor told an individual, you know, they're, they're 40 years old and said, man, you got the insides of an 80-year-old, you know. You, you, you heard things like that. Yeah. Well, this kind of thing is real. This happens. But God can touch you. God did something in Sarah that made her, her body change so much. She was so attractive at 90 that a king wanted her. For his, his wife at 90. Something happened. <laughs> Is that right? Something, something happened here. <laughs> Do you want to find out what happened here? Yes. And, and, and would you say, sign me up? <laughs> sign me up for some of that. <laughs> Read it again, verse 11. Through faith, Also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. The reason this is in here is because this here before this was an unheard of thing. Nobody had ever heard of anything like this happening. Today, people will read that and scoff and mock and go, oh, that's, you know, that's symbolic. That's symbolic. It didn't say it was symbolic. All right? It's not presenting it as symbolic. And, you know, how would that quicken your faith if it's symbolic? (laughs) If you're going to say, it didn't really happen. Somebody made it up. But it's symbolic. So read it and get a lot of faith. (laughs) dumb. (laughs) If it didn't happen, then you need to question this whole book. Right? And why are we reading it? Why are we talking about it? No, I'm convinced it happened. Literally. Physically. Sarah, when she was way past the age, uh, naturally that a woman could conceive and carry and bear a child. She did. Something happened. Something big happened inside her. Hallelujah. It affected her outsides. It affected her whole life. And at, uh, what was it, 91 years of age, 
She gave birth to a perfectly normal child, carried it full term, natural birth, and nursed it naturally at 91. <laughs> I want you to say this out loud. All things, all things are possible with God. Are possible with God. And, all and all things are possible to him that believes. Are possible to him that believes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want you to notice with me, we're going to be looking at different parts of this, but go back to Genesis and uh, look with me. Genesis 11. We're given in this, these accounts of Abraham and Sarah, a 25 year period or so, or plus, actually more than that, of their life. So we're not just looking at an instance or an episode where they used faith. We're getting to see how God first started dealing with them when they left Haran, and then through the first five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years it took to get them to the place where this miracle happened. And again, we talked about that uh, yesterday's class about living by faith. This is not just something we, we go to church and turn on our faith switch for a few minutes. Uh, it's, it's a way of life and it is progressive. Light is progressive and as you live and walk by faith, your faith is progressive. And uh, the Lord, His Word plants a seed in you. And if that seed is watered, it germinates. It puts roots down. It begins to develop up. And the longer you walk with the Lord, it just gets bigger and bigger in you. And your faith gets stronger and stronger. And your vision gets greater and greater. And maybe 25 years ago, if the Lord had brought it up to you, you'd have just fainted and said, no way, no way, no way. But after 25 years, he brings it up to you and you go, I believe it. Let's receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's all the time we have for the class today. <laughs> so we're going to continue in our walk, and it's going to be progressive tomorrow. Said out loud, I live by faith, I walk by faith, I overcome the world by faith, I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God.